When applying manure for many years, how high is too high of phosphorus levels? How much zinc should I be applying and what type of zinc? Water-soluble zinc sulfate with the planter and side dress are my easiest ways to apply. So, back up just a bit. Phosphorus and zinc are go hand in hand, correct? Yes, 10 okay. to 1. 10 to 1. 10 phosphorus to 1 zinc. Correct. Got it. Where am I at on that test? Um, on this test, yeah, you are not a 10 to 1. I am dead. Well, and, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. So, like, like on this test, you have... You have 40 pounds available, but it says here, so you're roughly, let's just call it 20, Mm -hmm. okay? For simple terms, you're 20, so you should have around 2 ppm parts per million uh, zinc. You're at a 0.27. I'm low on everything. Well, this is what... That field we run, the 107, (laughs) is low on zinc. Yeah. I'm low on zinc all over the place here. Yeah, well, and it goes back to the thing, too. Is it there? Mm. Like, when you pull a tissue test, are you low on zinc? I mean, that's something just to ask yourself while we're going through here, but sure. um, it's telling me that if you banned your phosphorus in this yeah. situation, if you ban phosphorus, that means your concentration is going to be more out of whack. So the importance of having zinc in that ban is even more important. Whenever I ban phosphorus, I need some zinc sure. because it goes back to that ratio because it's so concentrated in that band. Sure. So I am a huge proponent. Of when you put phosphorus in a band, you throw a little zinc in it. Got it. Unless your zinc numbers are way out of whack the other way. Sure. So if you're applying phos, you need zinc mm-hmm. in a 10 to 1 ratio. If you're putting 10 pounds of phosphorus down, you need one pound of zinc? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> now, you can get into economic barriers here of applying the zinc. So one thing I do do is I say at least do a, whatever the product is, at least do a pint then. You know, mm-hmm. if, if it's an economic thing or if it's a, a court, okay. just to get it closer. Sure. Uh, okay, I'm looking at my tissue test here. Zinc, I'm um, sitting at sufficient, actually, on corn. How? Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm going to file. Kirk, prepare thyself, please. Oh, shoot. Hang on. I'm just going to do one. Okay. Print. I'll pull up a tissue test. Okay. Because I think that's a very valid thing that we need to talk about a bit here. Um, Is that, um, would you band it in the planter? Would you put a lot of foss and a lot of zinc at the, at the, with the seed in furrow? Is that fertilizer, fertilizer source that you're using and salt index starts playing hugely into that. Sure. Um, <clears throat> with that being said, utilizing banding, utilizing in furrow, there is a quote unquote, an X factor. And I really, I don't know if X factor is the term or you're just being more efficient because it's concentrated closer to the plant. So it has a search for it as well. Sure. Um, with that being said, I mean, I can sit here and play devil's advocate, and there's some people that say, you know, do not put phosphorus in furrow because you start losing relationship to mycorrhizal fungi. I mean, th- that that research is out there too. Mm. I get to a part, though, that if your yield-limiting factor is phosphorus, you got you to gotta correct it. And, <laughs> and um, with that being said, now, can there be more in play that you can get biologicals going? Yes. But usually what I've seen is to get the soil releasing the way you need to is not an overnight deal. No, oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? So absolutely. Move towards the it right direction. It wasn't destroyed in a year. It yeah. can't be fixed in a year. Yeah. Like, don't think... I mean, our soils need a transition, too, just like everything else does. So um, that's when you... If you wanted to be more efficient, economically, tune down a little bit, and furrow and abandoning, you are going to get efficiency factors there. Sure. Uh, to help out with the crop. So, yeah, your zinc sitting, yeah, your your zinc sitting fine. Um, I don't know if they're the same fields, but long story short, if I got this, it tells me that there's zinc there. Mm-hmm. It's just not getting released at the time of the extraction. similar, virtually similar dirt, very similar dirt. Okay, almost across the creek from each other. Okay, so phosphorus is 
Pretty good. good. Potassium. Dude, I'm always low in potassium here. Always. I mean, I know it has a lot to do with biology, keeping biology going, but... Well, <coughs> excuse me. One thing I think about here is... So you see your potassium's low. I'm chronically low across most all of my ground. So it's more of a parent material deal. Okay. You know, like... Sure. So I get to a point here of like, okay, you're low in potassium, so how can we be more efficient with that potassium? Okay. Okay. Banding would be huge. Sure. You know, you're going to get a huge bump there. Mm-hmm. In season, doing 10 gallons of, you know, melted potash or melted... Uh, KTS. KTS. Something, yeah. Now, what melted I would... Melted potash. Yeah. Fascinating. I had not heard of that. Yep. Oh, man. Johnny, we have so much to do. <laughs> just smiles. <laughs> Y'all just wait. You ain't ready for what's coming for you. So, um, that could be in play here. Okay. You know, because there's a chance here that you, you keep applying potash every year and nothing really changes. Definitely if there's... If you're already close to that neutral pH mm-hmm. and you keep applying potassium, if there's no room for it on the colloid, it's going to go. Gotcha. Now it's going to be need more time. carbon? Possibly. Maybe. I mean, that'd be a way to help with that adjustment okay. of it uh, to get it more tied up. But Would you put carbon with the application of potassium? If it was liquid in a band 100%. Okay. Gotcha. Would you go humic or fulvic? What time of year? Summer. Let's just say spring, summer. Spring? Nope. Fall. Fall banding. Fall banding. Fall humic, winter. Humic all day long. Okay. If you're doing in season, I want to get this nutrient in this Crank. crop as fast as possible. Okay. Fulvic all day long. Got it. Because we don't want to tie it. No. We, we want to get, get it in. I mean, one thing I see with fulvic is it takes a minimum maintenance road. Yeah. And it turns it into an eight lane highway. Whoa. Is what I see it as. I love that. So whenever you're trying to get something into a plant, period. Yeah. Fulvic. Got it. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major podcast platforms. Um, We're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content 